Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the cells or batteries in this APC uninterruptible power supply unit. These batteries in it, I think are the original ones and they're shot. So like it just shows you nothing and it just beeps repeatedly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my own battery pack using my own cells. So I've purchased these UASA batteries here. I think that's how you pronounce it. These are my preferred brand because I've never actually had one uh, leak or spill to date yet, touch wood. And uh, they seem to last the longest out of the other batteries. They are a little bit more expensive, but they've been worth the investment so far, I think. You want 7 amp power, 12 volt cells, two of them. Uh, and we're going to take apart the existing battery pack and rebuild it using these cells and put it back in using the wiring and stuff from the old batteries. Once we've replaced the batteries, we're going to have to charge them up, and then we're also going to have to calibrate the unit. So what we do is we wait for them to fully charge, and then we'll put a load on the unit that's not important, so not a computer or a server or anything, uh, because it's going to randomly be turned off when the batteries run out. What we do is we run the batteries, charge them to full, and then drain them completely. And then the unit works out how long it will run based off a full charge depending on the load that's how it, this calibrates itself that's one way of doing it you can do it within software um, if you've got the appropriate cable and the software but I'm going to show you this way because anyone can do it this way so the way that anyone can do this is you have to basically put a fixed load on it something that's not going to go up and down so something like a light or a floodlight something like that so I'm going to use this selection of light bulbs here these are old style ones, not LED or energy saver ones. You want them to burn power. That is the whole idea. And this is a 540 watt output unit. So you want to load it to about 30 to 35% usage. About 30% of 540 watts works out as around 162 watts, something like that. This is about 160 watts worth of light bulbs here. And they're just wired to uh, a connector which is wired to a plug basically that I'm going to be plugging into the unit later on but first we've got to rebuild the batteries and charge this thing up okay so the first step for this thing is going to be to take the existing batteries out so we're just going to move all this stuff out of the way now on this uh, back UPS Pro 900 the batteries come out here I've not actually rebuilt one for this unit yet. This is actually the first time I'm doing it as well. So this is going to be a uh, a journey together. But I'd say, looking at that, it unclips. Yeah. So I push the two clips and it slides up. A little bit like that. A little lie that down. And there's the side bottom out. Then there's some tabs here. So it has got the original battery pack in looking at it. Oh, uh, just be careful what you're touching here as well, because these cells have actually leaked. Uh, there's acid and stuff that's sort of crystallized. But this here is residue from the battery acid and it can burn skin. So wash your hands once you've been touching stuff like this. I'm gonna brush it out of the way for the moment. So we can see these cells are actually well and truly bulged. I mean, look at the state of that. That should be black. You can see where it's cracking. There's bits of acid there. There's uh, some over here. Again, that's also bulged to touch there. Uh, on the bottom is where it's run down the cell. So this, was, this is at the bottom of the unit. You can see what's left where there's battery acid and swelling of the... The cells here as well it's actually quite hard to show you on the black batteries but trust me they are uh, bulged you can sort of see it there it doesn't look as bad on camera but it is quite bad so we can see now this is all the information for this battery pack if you're buying one from apc uh, i've actually had every single apc original battery pack i've had end up like this leaked and gone crappy um so I, I really don't know. I mean, I don't think they're using amazing cells because I've never actually had uh, a pack that I made using these UASA cells um, leak 
no matter what size, I've built them with all different size versions. There's actually other videos on my channel. But anyway, you can see the connector there where it plugs into the unit. At the top, there's nothing in the bottom. We need the, the guts in the middle of here to rebuild our new battery pack. So we're going to have to unpick all of this plastic packaging. So I'm just going to start by peeling these labels off. Do one side at a time. We can actually see what brand these batteries are anyway. When we do this, because the markings are still on them here. So, we'll peel this sticker off from one cell. Okay, so they are long branded batteries. WP 7.212. So the 7.2 amp hour is these. So the ones I'm putting in are slightly smaller. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take this sticker off all the way. And be careful not to stick it. Get loads of stuck to it. Because I want to reuse this to stick the battery pad together. So I'm going to put it that way around. Put it over there. So the cells are actually dropping apart right now. You can actually see where there's been bits of acid running through them and just, just try not to touch it obviously it's kind of unavoidable to a point there's actually wet acid there so now oh there that cell is actually fully split look at that there's a crack straight through it so I'm going to tip these down take the sticker off the other side I'm actually not sure how this battery pack is constructed I've not rebuilt one of these before it's always been for the uh, smart UPS series that I've done so we're learning together it's well stuck I will tell you that there we go I'm going to take the rest of the sticker off here there we go that's the back sticker off so now we can see this contraption -y plastic thing in the middle that the batteries connect through. I'm going to stand it up, just pull it apart a touch. So there's our connector uh, and the cells are just sort of hooked into it. So if I just pull this over I should be able to get the battery terminals off. quite tight there we go so there's that one disconnected you can see the red was at the back with the connector at the top obviously pay attention to the polarity they are color coded but this is a black wire with a red sleeve on that's positive let's get the other battery disconnected so now here you can see it's a bit more loose these wires are free so I'm going to pop this out and pull the connectors off. It'll be easier this way. There we go. If you're going to pull it with the whole assembly, obviously make sure you're holding the wire. Uh, I've got the positive off and now this is just loose. So we can get this off properly there we go so now we want to put this battery pack back together so I'm going to start by getting one of the new cells set the uh, plastic things off I'm going to push the spades over these batteries I've got these are new US cells I'm putting in. I've got slightly smaller terminal sizes, but it doesn't really matter so long as you get a secure fixing. You can see the, the size difference. You can actually get these with larger terminals, but I just ordered the ones that I got last time because uh, I assumed they were the same. I'd not actually took this apart before. But anyway, uh, the red we will get on. This is going to be rather tricky. If your batteries have got smaller terminals on your replacement cells, 
make sure that you are getting these on central with them and tight make sure that they are tight you can also squeeze them with the pliers to tighten them down more if you feel you need it but those are actually quite snug now they're on so I'm going to push that up that should sit about there the top of the battery with the wires going through now I've got to get the second cell on which is going to be this one to red, this one to black as before so I'll do it that way I think take the cap off and I'm going to do the red first I suppose it doesn't really matter, this one's easier to do because these are quite loose but I'm going to do red first and push that on it's all the way snug and then the black so these are in this case both of the faces are to the front again the same as the pat was before but do make sure you get the polarity correct you have to have these wired the right way around if you're doing this yourself so now we need to start sticking these things back together so, we're going to want that sticky plastic again. Now, if you lie this on its back, I can see because of them there, it drops. So I'm thinking having it upright is probably the best way, where we can line them centrally. And then put the sticker back on. So I'm going to do the front one first. And insert this way to connect the battery. It goes up with the, the pins on it. So I'm going to start by putting that in. I'm going to hold the cells together and drop that on. It's going to be quite hard to show you this, but... Right, and then I'm going to put it down for a moment. I'll put it that way, actually. There we go. So the weight of the battery is actually helping. That would have made sense in the first place. So looking at it, this one's actually on quite snug and in the right place, this label. Uh, there's still a bit of an air gap here, where I think it's a bit too far off that battery. So I'm just going to lift this side, because I've not stuck it down yet. Not fully anyway. And then I'll push that down. Again. There we go. That's a lot nicer. Yeah, this is definitely the way to do it. Um, stand one battery on top of the other and then put the sticker on. So now I'm going to do the bottom or the back side. So for this one, obviously, the tabs go the opposite end. So the tabs here that stick out here, you want them sticking on the other side now on this. So you can pull it out either way. So I'm just going to line this up again, make sure everything's straight and true. And then I'm going to stick this on. Let's line it up. I think that's pretty good. Do the top one first. And then stick it down to the bottom. Yeah, this is much easier doing it on its on the bottom of one of the cells. So there we go. Those are stuck together now. So there's a new battery pack made and ready to slot in. One more thing that's important that I always do uh, when I'm doing this, it's good practice anyway, is to label the batteries the date that you put the new cells in so you know when you look at them in the future how long it's been since they've failed. So I'm going to go and use my Dymo label printer now and put some labels on these. So I've got my label now with today's date on it, the 6th of the 10th, 2020. It is indeed the 6th of October. I'm going to put that on there. And then I can see that now from taking the bottom flap off. So I'm going to drop the battery pack back in, just going to check the insides of the unit for any 
rubbish that might need to come out, any dust and debris, there isn't really any, there's this bit here, but, but that's alright. And I'm going to insert these batteries, so stick them tabs back down, and slot these in. And that should go in quite nicely, like so, just ensure that they're firmly in place. I'm going to put the cover back on the bottom, making sure to get it to slot in. There we go. And that's all locked together again. So if we plug this in and leave it to charge up, so with the new batteries in and the mains in, let's turn it on. It's detecting batteries now, which is good, it's showing them fully charged. We should do a little self-test in a minute. So it's now on batteries. And it's on mains again. So we've got 243 volts coming in. It reckons it'll last for 581 minutes, but there's no way. That's because there's nothing on it. There's zero watts on it. So whilst it's plugged in, and we've got the luxury of that screen that tells us the wattage, I'm gonna connect these lamps. That I wired earlier to the battery output. So obviously we want to use the battery uh, backup section here, and they'll come on. We should have about 160 watts, which we've got 100 and. 67 watts, so it's close enough. That's good enough to do a calibration on the unit. So I'm just going to pull out the mains for a moment. It reckons it'll last for 20 minutes. But I'm just going to plug that back in. And now I'm just going to give this half an hour um, to make sure it is 100% fully charged. Even though it does show you there, it might not be quite there. So I'll give this half an hour and then we'll come back and we'll drain it. I'm just going to unplug the lights for now as well. Okay, so it's been a good little while. I've left this charging up. It's now fully charged. It's sat there. It's it's nice and ready to go, basically. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the lights to it to put the load on it. Then I'm going to pull the main power out of it and just leave it to drain, basically. And uh, I'll show you that. As it's draining, when it beeps and the alarm goes off, we've got the 163 watts. I'm going to pull the power out now. And you can see that the lights are still on. It's switched to show in the minutes. It reckons it's got 21 minutes left. Two power outage notifications, yeah. It's outputting 232 volts. No volts coming in. There's about 154 watts being loaded off it. So as the voltage changes, obviously the wattage does. 28% load, that's the utilisation. We can see we've lost one bar already. 50 years, 19 minutes it reckons. So I'm just going to leave this to go down and I'll come back and hopefully catch it as it's dying. It's currently 1 minute past 6. Okay, so it's just died. It's actually 6.26, so it lasted 25 minutes. I'm going to charge this up now, and then we should be good, calibrated, and all right. So I'm just going to plug the mains back in. Let it come back to life. I want to unplug the load again as well. So the load's off now. Let's see, we've got 242 volts coming in. And absolutely no information at the moment because it's just completely died. So now this will charge up and then it will display the correct running time and beep as it should. So that's how you manually recalibrate an APC UPS uninterruptible power supply unit and change the batteries and yeah that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you for watching if you enjoyed it please leave a like down below I found it helpful. Any questions leave them in the comments section down below 
uh, and get subscribed for future random technical videos like this one. Thanks for watching.